this computer. Okay, Frederick, I would like to hear just really quickly before you start out tonight, because I want to take this mm -hmm. clip and make us a little promo. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're going to do on Thursday at our um, in-person workshop, please. Absolutely, absolutely. Thursday is going to be exciting. So what we're doing here tonight is talking, we're going to be talking about time travel for photography. You guys will figure out, you'll find out in a second what I mean by that. But we'll be talking about time travel for photographers, but we're like time travel, we're going to be doing this out of order. So tonight, I'm going to show you some techniques. We're going to talk about a little bit of theory and why I, why I talk about this time travel stuff. And then on Thursday, we are going to capture the images that you will then be able to use what you learned tonight to put into action. So we're going to in the reverse Julia Child order, you know, where <laughs> we're going to bake the cake tonight and then get the ingredients <laughs> on Thursday. But I, I think it'll work out because you'll get the theory tonight and you'll understand why you're creating the images on Thursday. And then Thursday will execute. Then you'll be able to come back to the presentation recording and you'll have access to the slides and go to town. So Thursday is going to be amazing. I'm excited. All right. Thank you for that. So I'm really excited about it too. So Frederick, then um, you can share your screen. And okay. I would say um, we're going to go, you said for about 90 minutes. So maybe like halfway through, we'll take, you let me know a good stopping point and we can take a quick like five, 10 minute break and then we'll get back to it. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds good. That sounds good. So we'll, uh, you'll, there's some logical break times built into the presentation. So we can, uh, we can make use of those. Who wants to sit down for 90 minutes, listen to me talk. So, um, all fly. right, are we ready? Yeah. Ready. All right. So time travel for photographers, your camera, your time machine. That's this, this presentation. This is an interesting presentation and it has evolved over time and continues to evolve with the, the tools that are available to photographers and the techniques and the, you know, the, the, both the hardware and the software tools that are available. So we're going to talk about in this presentation, the hardware, the software, and then I'm going to do some practical technique where I have some images set aside that we're going to take in and do some magical things to. And then, like I said in the, the intro there, we're going to capture our own images on Thursday and work the same kind of magic instead of watching me do, do it here in the can. So who am I? I'm a photographer. I'm a podcaster. I won't belabor that intro. I won't read that again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I create stuff, you know, and I honestly think the word, the word photographer or even podcaster are limiting for most of us these days because we do more than that we do more than just capture still static images we do a lot of stuff right so me personally i'm creating video on a daily basis i'm doing talks like this on zoom i'm recording courses i'm consulting i'm doing all kinds of stuff i'm writing i love to write you know so i'm creating a, a ton of different kinds of media and the word photographer and or podcaster is kind of limiting i think the, a phrase that I coined about five or six years ago was a multimediographer. And I think we're all, we're all kind of multimediographers that we, we tell stories by the best means at our disposal, right? Sometimes it's a still photograph, sometimes it's written word, sometimes it's animation. But the cool thing about today is almost everybody has one of these cameras in their pockets or one of these screens where they can consume content and that content can be audio and video and spoken word. We don't have to limit ourselves to still photographs if that doesn't tell the story that we want to tell. So this is me, Frederick Van Johnson, photographer. And you can call me a multimediographer. So what do I mean by your camera is a time machine? So I'm going to talk a little bit about theory because I'm a big science nerd. I love science and astro astrophysics and the speed of light was one of the things that got me into photography in the first time because we still don't understand light, right? We literally, we, we don't understand light and we don't understand gravity to, to the degree that we want to, which makes it magic to me. It's really magical that we can, we have these cool tools, these cameras that can capture it and software that can do cool things with it. So this is the stuff that we're gonna dive into. Um, 
there's three main sections in this presentation. Some are going to be longer than others. I'm going to just touch on a couple of them or one of them kind of briefly. Uh, but the first one is kind of is a Harry Potter one. I'm going to touch on that briefly. I'm going to show you some examples of that. We won't go into too much demo. But I, this is more of the cinemagraph type effect where the time travel metaphor comes into play with this one where you have captured a moment in time and you wave your magic wand to release a part of that image or a, a, a part of that motion to let it flow freely. So you've seen this a million times. I'll show you some examples of it and then we'll discuss some of the tools that is necessary to make these. And again, we're gonna capture all these images on Thursday. So watch out. Uh, the second one is I call Reanimator. Who remembers that movie in the, I think it was the 60s or the 70s, Reanimator is a horror movie. It was about basically this mad Frankenstein type scientist that figured out this formula that he could pour on non-living things and reanimate them. So morbidly, I'm using that example here for this one because we're adding life to static pixels. We're gonna take images, and this is where we're gonna spend a lot of time tonight. We're gonna take images that have already been captured without any sense of motion in mind for them, and we're gonna add motion to them. And let me show you how to do that. It's really, really quite cool what you can do these days. And the, the technique I'm gonna show you here on the computer, I'm gonna screen share and show it, but you could also do this on your phone or on a tablet. It's, uh, it, it's, kind, of, it's kind of nuts. And then multiple personality disorder, uh, creating multiples of you. This is, um, uh, we're, we're basically gonna dive in and show some examples of creating scenes with multiple iterations of a single subject in the scene and how do you do that? And I, I kicked this presentation off with, with basically saying that the tools have evolved and they're at this point now where you know they're, they're highly powerful. The multiple personality disorder one is really interesting because Nikon just released a firmware update to their flagship Z9 camera that does this thing in the camera. <laughs> so that where it used to be, you have to do it in Photoshop and you know all these other things I'm gonna show you. Now you can do it in the camera, which is kind of nuts. I haven't seen it done yet, but allegedly it works. So those are the three main sections of this presentation. Like I said at the beginning, we'll pause between each one for a break and Q&A and all that. And at the end of this presentation, there's a slide with a QR code on it that you guys can aim your phone at and scan it and it will give you access to this exact presentation. So you don't have to take notes or anything. You'll get access to this document and you know have at it for your, your own reference. Frederick, so, that's awesome, so that's thank the, you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I sat in on lots of presentations where I wish they had done that. So now I'm doing it on all my presentations. <laughs> so, so these slides are your slides. So you don't have to worry about screen capturing anything. You will have access to these exact slides. All right, uh, so first, uh, this is this is space, right? This And this shot, I put this shot in here just to kind of illustrate the idea of what light is, right? And I, and I wanted to tell a little story that my, my entire family are science fiction nuts, right? We love Star Trek, we love Star Wars, we love all these different shows. And I think my dad turned us onto that because it's, those kinds of shows, most of them paint kind of a utopian future of where things could go positively. Some of them are negative where we don't want things to go, but a lot of them are positive and they show us where things could go. But then when I started learning about astrophysics and science and all these things, light was the one thing that struck me because whenever you look up at the night sky, depending on your area and the amount of light pollution you have, you could see something like this, right? You could look up and see these. And the depressing thing for me was being a science fiction nerd, the light from most of these stars, the stars that created them or the galaxies or whatever may not even be there anymore because light takes time to go from point A to point B. So the source of that light could be dead already. That was fascinating to me that you could literally be looking at the ghost of an image, right? Because light travels at 186,000 miles per second, which seems like it's ridiculously fast, it's actually really slow, you know, based on the size of things. But in photography, that we can make use of that speed or that slowness of light speed to do some pretty, pretty cool stuff. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this deck. So uh, let's move on to this next slide. Okay, so we're the first thing I wanna talk about are tools. So what are the tools that you need to do this? And surprisingly, there's really one 
well, two main tools. You need a camera, of course, or your time machine to capture this. But the other main tool, you guessed it, would be a tripod, right? Because you need to lock your camera down and make sure that, you know, things aren't moving between each of the, the frames that we're going to take. So a camera, I like mirrorless cameras. I shoot um, two brands. I shoot Lumix and Nikon. And I love both of my cameras. They can both handle this the things that we uh that you know the time traveling techniques they can handle that very easily uh, a sturdy tripod if you're shooting mirrorless then most tripods are sturdy enough but you know i'm sure you guys have talked about the importance of investing in in quality gear if you buy a good tripod it's gonna last you forever right you buy a cheap one you're gonna buy it a couple times and end up spending the same amount of money that you would if you had to just buckle down and bought the good tripod plus you'll miss some images right so buy a good tripod a good sturdy tripod and be done with it with an Arca Swiss mount on it. And then a strobe. For some of these things, uh, you want to be able to capture, you know, uh, scenes where there's not enough available light. But uh, for the most part, a lot of the things that we do don't require a strobe. Um, one thing to throw in there at the top of this, this slide, which you'll see in the, uh, when, you, when you get access to the slide, this will be in there as well. I think this is actually hyperlinked. But the uh, twip.pro slash gear list will take you to a page on my website, thisweekinphoto.com, that has an exhaustive listing of everything that I use for photography and podcasting and drone work and all that stuff. So it's all there. So you don't have to worry about, again, screen capturing. It's all captured for you here. All right. The next thing underneath it all. So this is a new thing that I have. So these guys sent me one of these and sent me this coupon to share with you guys. Um, I have it in my hand here. I'll show it. I'll bring this with me on Thursday. But this thing is really interesting to me uh, from the standpoint of its portability and it's the ability to get low angles, right? Lower angles than you could with your, I mean, you could with your, with your tripod by inverting the center stalk and putting your camera down below and doing some other things. But this thing, it's so quick because it has an Arca Swiss mount on it. I can slap my camera on the top of it, set it down, and start taking pictures really, really quickly. I'll demo this in person, let you guys use it and take some shots with it if you come out when we do the when we do the in-person thing. But this, when I first saw these, to be honest with you, I thought they were kitschy because it's, the, okay, it's a piece of metal with some holes cut out of it. And this thing is, the top thing is a new kind of tripod head that they call the Plata Ball, I think. Yeah, it's called the Plata Ball. And it is a, it's a new way to think about a tripod head, like a quick release kind of ball head with a fluid mount. I like it, but I like it and I don't like it, right? I like it from the standpoint of it's quick. It lets me get my camera on there quick and down to the ground and reposition it and get it where I want it to go really quickly. But it's a little the the platypod the platypod ball itself is a little bit on the heavy side. So you know I have some other heads that are much lighter that do the same thing. So I'll let you guys play with it. You can be the judge over if it's worth it or not. But if you you know there's a FVJ twenty five. I think that'll take twenty five dollars off that platypod ball head. The extreme this bottom plate thing here is in a Kickstarter right now and it doesn't end until May eighth. So they have, they haven't even launched it officially yet to their website. But you guys will get to play with it and and bang it up on uh, on Thursday. Ooh, but I these are these are cool so excited about that. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah have at it. You know, put it through its paces. That's a good a better shot of the the mount, the bottom mount, the uh, the platypod. This is this thing is really cool because I from a from a multimediographer standpoint. It's got all the things on it, right? So I can put lights on it. I can put a microphone on this thing and just set it on the table. I can put a camera. I can put a, a tripod head on it like you saw uh, just a minute ago. All kinds of things. And those little feet on the four corners are rubber the way it's sitting now. But you can reverse them and take those little rubber tips off and they become spikes so that you can literally stick it on ice or stick it, you know, it'll grab on anything you put it onto, which is... It's really interesting. Like I said, I thought it was ridiculous when I first saw it, but, you know, diving into it and playing with it, I'm like, okay, this is going to stay in my bag for a while. So you guys, you guys can play with it on Thursday. All right. So moving on to software tools, the tools of the time traveler. So these are three main tools to do those three things that I talked about at the beginning. Of course, Photoshop, because Photoshop, right? Or if you use other tools like Affinity Photo or 
GIMP or something like that that does Photoshop like things you need a, an image manipulation type piece of software. That's where Photoshop stands. The middle one is called uh, Plotograph. Uh, and then the last one is called Cinemagraph Pro. We're going to spend the most time in Plotograph tonight. We're going to capture images and talk about examples for the other two. The Plotograph one in the middle is the, the application that lets you add animation to still photos after the fact on Windows, on Mac, on iOS, and I believe they'll, they'll be releasing Android shortly. This one, this one is really cool with some caveats. So I'll throw a caveat in there that, and I'm gonna brace you. So when you download the software, you can get a free account, you don't have to pay for it, you know, but when you launch it, it's going to have the feeling of dogs playing poker on velvet painted with neon black light. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. That's what the artwork that that is in here currently, but that that masks the power of the overall application because it lets you do some pretty amazing things. But you, it's like it's like Pet Cemetery, right? You got to wade through a bunch of nonsense to get to the good stuff. So just keep that in mind. I'll show you the good stuff tonight, so you guys will you'll understand what it means. And then the cinegraph bird rights. Uh, that's the one that allows you to release motion and images. I'll give you a glimpse at the end and then I'll show you a bunch of examples. But again, we'll spend most of our time in, in the middle guy there, which is photograph. So who's ready to dive in? Show me your hands. Hands if you're ready to dive into this. Any audience participation? I know Phil's in here. Phil Lewenthal's in here. Phil, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lucy. All right. So here we go. Let's dive in. So the first thing is the Harry Potter effect, I call it. So you guys have seen, I'm sure you've seen Harry Potter, right? And one of the scenes in Harry Potter is where they have an image that, or a photo or some kind of painting on the wall that then moves inexplicably, right? So this is this is that technique. And Dan, I'm gonna mute you. There we go. Okay, so this is this is that technique, the Harry Potter effect. So let's step into what that looks like. A couple of examples here. All right, so this this image that you're looking at now, I created this. Let me give you the backstory of this one. This was, uh, there's a mansion in Northern California in a town called Ione, I-O-N-E, Ione. And it is supposedly the most haunted place in California. And this was taken in an abandoned school for boys that allegedly some bad stuff happened. You can Google it if you want. I won't go into it here, but they open it up once a year to photographers to come in because it is, it is everywhere you look in this place, it's an amazing background, whether you're doing model photography or just urbex stuff or even landscapes, the, the surrounding area is just amazing looking. So what we did, me and, a, me and a, uh, some crew, I think I had about three or four people with me, went there and our mission, our self-imposed mission was to create a kind of a creepy image, but not too creepy. Uh, and we wanted to do it all with props that we purchased on the way there at Salvation Army Store. So we Where stopped literally, Where is I own, I own. I own California. This place is called Preston Castle. Preston okay. Castle. Yeah. Um, so everything you see in this shot, the, you know, from the, the hat that she's wearing to her dress, to the teapot, to the flowers, to the doll, everything. We just randomly grabbed it from the Salvation Army on the way up to I own California to do the shot. And uh, this is this was a fun shot. So let me play it for you and show you what it looks like. Oh, let's go back. So, sorry about that. Stand by. Okay, let's give it a second to catch up. Oh, for some reason, this is not going to play for me. Hold on. The demo gods are mad. Okay. 
All right. Well, what we'll do is I will screen share YouTube and play that for you in just a second after this. Um, each one of these, I'll share them with you because I don't think any other of these are going to play. Interesting. What did I do to you? Okay. You guys have to see these. So I'm going to show them to you. Hang on one second. Give me one second. I will show them to you directly because it's important that we see these. Well, while Frederick's looking for that, I can tell you guys that I love my platypod and I'm so excited. I have the original one and I am excited to see that extreme one because I didn't know they had it. Yeah. And it's they do. Cool. That's a really cool thing. And that new ball head. Now I'm going to want to go buy that too. Cause I think I just have the original Ben pro one. So very cool. Okay. Is it playing now? There it goes. Now it's playing for me. Okay. Now let's see if we can get it to play for you. How about that? All right. Let me screen share this again. I'm going to play it directly from this window. All right. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yes, good. Yes, I can All see right. It. Okay. So. So let me pause it. So what you're seeing here is a cinemagraph. This is a loop. This is a still photo where I've released some of the motion in the photo. Right, and the only motion that has been released is the motion from here in her arm, through here, the teapot, and of course the liquid in the cup. And if you've noticed, there's a fan in there off camera that's blowing wind on the little feathers in her hair to add motion there. Everything else is frozen completely because it's a still. So let's let's play that again. This is a loop. So if the, the astute of you will notice that the liquid is going in and out of the cup over time. So this is a loop and this just goes on for two, and eight, two minutes and eight seconds, right? So the interesting thing about this is we stand alone, this would have been interesting. And most of the cinematographs that we see like this or the Harry Potter effect images that we see like this are, they're mute, right? They have no audio, they have no ambiance with them. They're just saying, hey, look at me. I'm a, I'm a pretty girl on a balcony with a flowing red dress and the red dress is moving, whoopee, that's it. You get no other context other than that. What I promote is take it a step further like we're doing here, right? I've added a sound effect or a music backing track I've added the sound effect of the liquid pouring into the cup. I've added a little bit of wind because there's wind in the room. So you'll hear, I'll play it again. You'll hear a little bit of wind blowing to sell that. And the whole thing sells together, right? It, it all sort of works together after that. I don't think the audio is coming through. It wasn't coming through? I don't think so. No. Okay, well, take my word for it. There yes. was music playing. <laughs> there was music. You will see this when you see this deck on your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> all there the, was music. All the more reason to come on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And that's why you will have access to this deck. So you can look at the whole thing. You'll see all of these. They're all embedded, right? Um, so yeah, what I was, yeah. So the, the audio is playing in the background. There's a little bit of ambient sound in there for the mute, for the wind to give it that spooky feel. And then there's also the liquid pouring in there. So all that kind of com combines together to give you a, you know, the effect of what we're going for here. So this next one, all right. So this guy, if this is gonna play for me too, are we just gonna be, is everybody just gonna not work for me today? I think that's what we're gonna have. Okay, let's go here. I think maybe he wants me to present.
Okay, good. Okay. So this one, are you, you guys seeing the train fly by in the background? Okay, good. So this one is an example of a simple cinemagraph where, and it, the, the interesting things about these cinemagraphs are, these are literally just video clips, right? So they're, they're still photographs. And of course they abide, you have to abide by all the, the standard rules of photography, composition, lighting, exposure, all that, but you're capturing motion and in your head, you're capturing motion or you're capturing a still photograph that will then turn into motion. So this photographer, this is not my shot, but this photographer did a couple of things here. You'll notice there's a motion blur going on. So use the long shutter speed, probably had a subject sit and stand in the front and remain completely still and they timed it so that when the train went by, they would get the, the train kind of flowing through the scene, right? Look at the impact or lack thereof of this one versus the other one, which you couldn't hear the audio on anyway. <laughs> so this one, this one has no audio, right? There's no audio. If he had added kind of the sound of the clanking train wheels on the track, maybe some murmur of city sounds in there would have sold it a little bit more. And these, these are the things that we're gonna do in a, in a couple of days when we, uh, when we do our presentation or we do our workshop. Okay, so the next one and the last one that I wanna show you is this one. And present this. So very simple. So this one, I, I added this into the presentation. There's a little bit of music playing in here, but it has nothing to do with the, with the overall content. But these are just really good examples just to whet your appetite and spark your, your uh, creativity on what can be done with these things. We're gonna do several like this on Thursday. But the, the point I wanna make about this particular slide and this whole series of images is that these, the, what I see and what I wanna hope to avoid when we make our, our work like this is that there's very little story attached to these images, right? There's there are images that have been created for the sake of the demonstration of the technique and the technology versus why is she holding that ball, right? Is there a story behind that? Or did you just wanna say, hey, look, look, at, this, look at this person spinning a ball, right? We want to make, we're, we'll tell stories and we'll go into some effects on how we can do that on Thursday. Okay. So let's get out of that. And then we will move on to the next one. So the next one is reanimator. So I want to take a quick break, just a five minute Q&A break and bathroom break. If you guys want to take one, then we'll dive into the reanimator one. This one is gonna be a, a longer segment because I'm actually gonna take you into software to show you how we, we're gonna add animation to these images and we'll, we'll take it from there. So if we wanna, Michelle, do you wanna take a quick, maybe three to five minutes or do you wanna yeah, press on? It's 6.58, um, let's come back at 7.03 and you can answer questions real quick. I am gonna run and use the bathroom, but if people can stay, go, whatever. Awesome. And I'm going to figure out why these videos are not playing with them. Okay, these should work fine.
recording in a couple of weeks. Michelle, have you been out to this farm? Oh yeah, many times. It's really pretty, huh? It looks awesome. Yeah, yeah it's really pretty. WICP went this month. We missed out on that thing. The we'll women see. We had so much fun. Then we had pizza. Day late and a dollar Ooh. short. You know what I mean? It's like, oops. Great place. Yeah, a lot of my high school seniors want to go there for their photo shoots. Yeah, I bet. Well, is everybody back? We're ready to go again here. I, I kept it recording. I forgot to pause it. So we're still recording. Oh, yeah. So did I. The recorded people need a break, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. So, hey, Frederick, did you see yeah. my note? This is Lucy. Hey, Lucy. I, I have a show as well. I'd love to talk about maybe doing guest swaps so. you have yourself a deal my friend i'm always looking for always looking for new guests on the show uh from experienced all you know all the way down to new photographers i've had them all on the show so yeah cool. yeah and totally I am too. so yeah this would be fun to share yeah with my group 
Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We have to I'll do it. An email. And I have a, yeah, I've been doing, I've been podcasting for about 12 years. So I have a, oh, wow. a long guest list of people that I've talked to. So I can, if you want to, if you need to talk to somebody or you want me to put you in touch with someone, just let me know. I can. Thanks. I'm I can almost that. at three years. So uh, yeah. Good. Uh, Good. I need to listen to yours. And so I'll send you an email. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. always happy to talk shop yeah yeah so much fun so i put the mm -hmm. name of it in the it's called the profitable photographer i put it in the chat uh, Anybody's like hey oh yeah cool i see it now okay perfect i got it well shameless plug right. for me here for y'all <laughs> is that a term pod swap lucy I just made it up. I'm going to trademark it <laughs> along with uh, post and pray. That's one of the oh, there you, go. you know ways to sell. I'm trademarking, trademarking post and pray. It's in a gallery, hope for the best. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> All right. I think everybody looks well. I can't tell if they're back or not because they didn't put their pictures up. So let's keep going. This is fun. Okay. Let's continue. This this next section will be really fun, um, and um, one of the ones that I'm I'm really interested to to share, mainly because of the opportunities that it gives us to reanimate older images that and and reexamine them and maybe give them new life and share them. Um, so a couple of examples. We'll start off right off the bat with a, a few examples. Are you guys Are you guys seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay, so this shot, you seeing the animated hair on this person? <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so this that's that is my my Just oldest daughter. Yeah. She, Ooh. yeah, that's my oldest daughter. She's modeling in Japan right now, and the this is an this is one of the effects that we can do with the software that I'm going to demo. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do something like this. You would think that this took After Effects and 10 hours and sweat and tears and trial and error. Literally, this was just a couple of minutes and you can add animation like this to a still photo. All right, and this next shot, um, I call it the wet wedding, right? And you can see that there's multiple things going on in this shot. Let's play it again. So you can see that there's, um, okay. So you can see the you can see that the there's water in the foreground flowing, right? And we'll get to this one in a second. It really wants to go to that one. There's water in the the foreground flowing on this one, and then there's also the dress that animates over time into the puddle down below. So how do we do that? Really, really easy. I'm going to show you how to do that, and we're going to do these these sh similar shots like this. One that's a little bit more subtle would be this guy, right? This was over this past winter in Chicago, in Lake Michigan. I was out there walking and I just, you know, the lake was frozen like this. I put this shot together, added the birds, of course, animated the clouds, and there we go. These are all still photos. You know, nothing, there was no video captured at all in any of the photos that you're looking at. This is a more intricate one here. You'll notice those birds, right? Similar birds. I call this one depression, right? And it kind of has that depressed feel about it, black and white, of course. Multiple layers going on, ground is moving. We have an animated birds in the sky. And if you have a quick, if you have a, if you have a, a keen eye, you'll notice that those birds are flying inverted, right? <laughs> so there's inverted birds flying in the sky and wisps of clouds or smoke flowing through there and a hint of lightning in the background. All this, easy to do, all this, I believe this one was even done on an iPad, you know, so this is, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to do this. And you can tell, you can see that when we, when you put these together, you kind of have kind of a story in the back of your head with great power comes great responsibility because you could throw a bunch of stuff in here and have it just look horrendous. But, you know, with a, with a light touch, you can do some pretty amazing things. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you how to make these. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and share this application. Stop this one and share another one. So the app, the app that I'm using is called Plotiverse. And as you'll see, when I share this, it's, um, yeah, it, I'm looking at some of the art now. So this is what you see when you first launch the app. There's just all kinds of, all kinds of stuff going on in here um, that could be a little overwhelming. It does, a, they do a lot of still work in here, but it's a lot of the work is very heavy handed uh, and hard to look at, right? But if you, you use the tool and use a light touch with it, you can do some pretty interesting things. So let's take a look at some of the things that we can do. Zoom out of my way here. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create um, what they call a plotograph, which is an animated image. And let's hope the application doesn't crash on me. So out of there, I think I'm too quick on the draw. Plotograph. Frederick, is this on your desktop or on a, are we screen sharing a, phone or something this this is on my desktop okay and it it is for some reason struggling right now it's the zoom yeah i think it might be zoom is is not happy with it let's see let me see if i can stop the screen share and see if it'll it'll be more cooperative zoom likes to have the solo attention i think right it says look all i'm doing for you you can't possibly want to look at something else Right, how dare you, right? Okay, I got it to go to the next screen. So let's see if it'll let me screen share now. Okay, so these are some pre-built projects that I put in here to play with. Um, I'm gonna start with this dramatic waterfall here. So we're gonna shot, this is just a regular shot of an old waterfall that you may have taken on any trip. So what would you do, like if you could just make that waterfall start flowing? right in other software or in using other techniques is going to take a lot of work to do that and it would still probably look kind of weird when you finished but with this software we can basically it's a it's a matter of masking and adding animation points right or saying i don't want this area to move i do want this area to move and there's a couple of ways we can do that so i'm going to go in i'm going to get my brush tool and let's do, we can do a couple of things. We can, as you can see on the side here, I can mask all or unmask all, right? So I'm gonna click mask all. So now it, the whole thing is masked and I'm essentially saying, I don't want anything to move, but I can go in and grab my eraser brush and selectively release areas that I want to be affected by my animation like this. So all this is gonna be affected and you don't have to be like amazingly precise. You can use the, just like in Photoshop, you can use the left and right bracket keys to change the size of your brush. This is what I did. I got a bigger brush so I can work faster for you. So come here and we're gonna just stop here. Now we're not done with our animation, but I just wanna get a feel for what it's gonna look like first. No, but right now we actually don't have any animation. All we have is a shot that we say it's not moving and we haven't told it what we want to move. And to tell it to move, you just add animation points. So I'm going to grab this arrow button here and click and drag down arrows in the direction that I want my animation to happen. That's literally it. And the, the length of the arrow that you drag is, dictates the speed of the animation. So a shorter arrow, I believe I'm going to say this right, a shorter arrow means shorter animation, longer arrow, arrow means longer animation. We're going to go medium size with this. So, and I want the arrow to move in this, the motion to move in this direction. So let's add a couple of animation points in here. I'm not doing anything scientific or precise. I'm just literally dragging some arrows down. And if, you, if, if you're paying attention, all I did was say, let's mask all this off and put some arrows in there to move that, right? So now let's play that and see what we get. Zoom out of my way. Zoom is literally in my way. Okay. 
So I'm going to click this play button down at the bottom and see what happens. So it's close, right? It's pretty close. So let's fine tune it. So if we see, we see we have some little errors in here, right? This looks a little weird at the top here. So maybe we want to freeze this a little more at the top so the, the motion doesn't start, start right at the edge because it's pulling animation in from that sky. So how do we do that? So what we can do is go into animation points and add stabilizer anchor points. These are like, if you use a metaphor of a bed sheet, and if you, you know, you grab the bed sheet and kind of whip it, it, you know, it puts ripples in there, basically animation throughout the whole thing. But if you put rocks on the edge or in certain areas of that bed sheet, those areas are going to be locked down and not move, right? So that's what we're doing with our stabilization anchor anchor points, stabilization anchor points. So I'm going to pin here, here, basically putting pins in this literally so that nothing moves in this area up there. I want that to stay put. And we might as well put, do it down here too because we know this, we don't want this rock to move in the foreground. So that's it. Let's click play and see what we get. Much better, right? <laughs> Just like that, we're adding animation to this thing that looks realistic. And the cool thing about this is it is designed to create seamlessly animating loops. So this, if you export this, it'll create a six second animation loop in 4K or whatever resolution that you want it to be in, and it will just loop forever. Cool thing about that is services like Instagram and Facebook support looping animation. So now you can take this, put it on one of those services, and you got something pretty cool, right? And that's just a one element of the shot. We could have done multiple things. Like if there are clouds in here, we could animate the clouds as well, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Let's go a little bit further and uh, pick a different image. Any questions on this before I move on to the next one? The next one's a little bit more complex. Okay, so pause that one. And let's go back to photograph. And that is a video. Okay, so now let's do uh, something a little bit more tricky using the same technique, masking and anchoring. But let's do something with, with this shot that has a foreground element here. Again, another waterfall. We have some different kind of water down here that we'll do some different things with, but we have a, a guy up here. So how do we do that, right? Same technique, repetition, repetition. So let's mask the whole thing. Now let's go in, I'm gonna zoom it. I'm hitting my command and plus key. And I'm going to grab my mask again, go into the erasure brush, and I'm going to mask this guy, right? So I could do this, and you guys have seen this. We could also pin him, right? So let's, let's not do what we're doing. Let's clear this mask. I'm going to unmask all. I'm going to zoom out a little. This time, instead of using the masking technique, I'm going to just use the pinning technique because I'm, you know, maybe I just want to, maybe I think that'll work better on this one. So I'm gonna put pins around the edge of this guy. And I'm, all I'm saying is these pixels, don't mess with them. This, this tends to be, um, you t basically when you're, when you're doing fine work like this, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be demoing in front of a crowd, right? And you wanna take your time and zoom in and make sure everything is perfect on these. And you'll likely use a combination of these tools. You'll use the masking tool, and these anchor point tools, kind of like we did on that last waterfall. So there we go. So I'm just going around the edge, probably using way more than I need, but why not, right? So here we go. From the edge, all around. So this will be a good example of, will it work? Will it work? So we got most of it, right? Let's go in here, put a couple there. We don't want any of that to work to move around right in here. Okay, so now let's just draw some animation arrows. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna grab animation points and I'm gonna do the same thing. You know, what? we could be a little, we could be more creative with this. Let's, let's say this water's moving upwards. What if, since we are masters of space and time, we can do whatever we wanna do. So there we go, some animation there, there there 
And if you notice, I haven't masked off these outside areas. They're kind of a void anyway but I tend to want to make sure that things are locked down. I'm going to do it this way first so we can see what happens. Let's click play. Weird. Weird, right? But fun. We can totally do this, right? So now let's go in and put some more animation lockdown points over here. So we don't want any of this moving down here. Let's make sure you stay put. And let's go get our mask brush make it big and say leave all this alone just leave it alone okay let's hit play and see what this looks like much better and you see if you look in here the this is a good example of what happens when you use animation points versus the masking so had I masked him, you see around the edges, there's a there's a gradient of animation added. Like the animation is stronger up here than it is closer to his head. And it's a little bit weird and disjointed, even though you know water's flowing upwards, but whatever. But in this case, the you know, I did the anchor points for example, but in this case, I would likely just spend the time to zoom in and mask him and then in certain areas add anchor points to pin it down to make it perfect. But imagine what you could do with this, right? So you can add animation basically to anything. We've been adding animation to water, which is I think the easiest thing to add animation to. I wanna add animation to um, just something different next. So let's go into photograph again. How about a sky? All right. So on this one, you know what, you guys know the deal. You could probably do this by yourselves now, right? This is really easy. So I'm gonna mask off this guy. And the entire bottom. See how sloppy I was? I'm just being completely sloppy. I'm working on a trackpad. You could be on an iPad working with your finger or being precise. When I do these, normally I'm using an iPad with the, with the Apple Pencil. So let's get that out of there. I'm adding, oops. So let's go back over and get our eraser brush. Get rid of that all the way down there. Okay, so we kind of got that done right there. So now let's add a little animation to the sky. Get rid of that spot right there. Oops. Okay, it's gone. Now let's add a little animation to our sky. So we'll make the sky go into, into the direction that it kind of appears to be moving in, maybe kind of up and to the right, I'm thinking, maybe, I don't know. So maybe the, side, the sky was originally flowing in this direction, kind of like that. It, it doesn't, they don't all have to be going in the same direction either, right? So we're flowing in this direction, in this direction, and let's hit play. Horrible, too much, right? Because I use really long animation points. It looks obvious. Look at my crap masking job on our foreground element, right? So because we didn't zoom in and because we weren't precise, that's what you get, right? But if you're precise and you zoom in and you take your time, you make a really nice mask, which doesn't take that much time. Just basically outlining your character and being precise about your or relatively precise about your animation points then you'll get a much more satisfying result like we did in the in the previous ones so let's redo this one real quick i'm going to select all delete all those animation points i'm going to go to masking i'm going to mask all and uh actually let's unmask all because we're only going to work on our little guy here so let's zoom in zooming in i'm command plusing Okay, so now let's zoom in. Okay, so now let's get our masking brush. We'll be a little bit more precise with this guy. 
you know what, I'm not going to do this. Actually, let's do our anchor points on this one. Because, because this guy is all in black, I think the anchor points will work much better on this because they don't, there's not a whole lot of decision making for them to do here. So let's go here. Let's give it a shot. So we don't have to spend the time painting him in. I'm going to unmask all. I'm going to go to animation. I'm going to grab my stabilizer points and I'm going to just put it on. I'm going to be sloppy to see how good it is. I'm just going to put it on this black void for, of a silhouette person here. I'm saying don't move that. Don't move this foreground layer. Leave that alone along the edge. Let's take all that. OK, so now that's locked down. Now let's add some animation points and see what we get. I'm going to add one long one in here to see if uh, actually that was a anchor point. So let's get rid of that. Let's add an animation point. So let's add one here. It's a little short one. So let's see what that does. Uh -oh. There we go. Much better, right? So much more convincing. So I'm going to take, let's make more animation points. Let's go boom, boom, here, 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 here. Maybe down here. Sky's moving a little faster. Like that. Um, then now I'm freestyling. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to go to stabilizer points. And I don't want my horizon line to move. So I'm going to lock that down, put some pins on that. And I'm going to animate that water. So let's say the water is moving upwards, kind of in that direction a little bit, very subtly. And you guys can see all I'm doing here is masking and, and drawing vectors, you know, and that's basically it, drawing a path and a direction. And then we hit, pay, hit play on this. Looks convincing, but we need some work. We can see in this area, this looks a little weird. So we need to mess with our animation points. We can see right here, our stabilizer point is not doing its job. So we need another stabilizer point here. Our horizon is bleeding through a little bit. So we got to lock that down. And all you do is stop it and go in and fix it, right? So we're going to add a couple of stabilizer points here here, here, and there, and here on the arm. Make sure that's better. I'm gonna go grab my my uh, animation. Actually, let's go grab our delete animation point. And we'll click on this guy and delete these two and see if that makes it a little bit more subtle for us and hit play. So you can see how you refine this over time and things get better and better and better. These are just random pictures, right? So if you had shot something specifically with animation in mind, you knew you were gonna animate it, you have complete control over this, right? You could do whatever you want. The other side of this coin is these techniques can be mixed together. So if you have a shot where, you know what, I really, you know, you basically, if you wanna create a cinemagraph using, and add animation to it in the background. So now you have a still photograph with animated sky moving in a perfectly seamless loop with a person pouring tea in the foreground over and over again. You have control of that. You have control over the whole thing. Putting all that together is where Final Cut Pro or using the video features of Photoshop comes in, but it's completely possible. And getting to this level takes no effort at all. You, this software works on your phone, literally, right? I'm doing it on a computer because I want to screen share for you guys. But you can do this exact same thing on your phone, on your iPad, on your Android device, on your iOS device, wherever. You know, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, and then we're here at 7.30. Okay, one final guy here. Okay, so this one was really, really, uh, this is, this one is, this one looks complicated, but it's not really complicated, right? So you've got a lot of stuff going on here. So you've got the hot sky, you've got the surfer in the foreground, you've got the, the cresting waves, et cetera. 
So, and you'd probably want these waves to be moving in different directions. So you want the bottom waves here to kind of be sweeping up in this direction. And you want these curls to be curving over in that direction. Meanwhile, you don't want any of this moving and you don't want him moving at all. So what you would do is mask him first and then anchor point everything down that you don't want to move, i.e. this horizon line, the sky, right? And then just have fun adding your animation points in here and pressing play to see what you get. You know, it's almost the gamification of image making. So let's see how fast I can do this. So let's see if I can do this in a minute or two, right? So let's go in. I'm gonna get my mask brush. I'm gonna paint in over our surfer here, probably a little sloppy to begin with, and then I'll go in and clean it up. All right, we'll make our brush a little bit smaller. Maybe a little bit bigger so I can see it. Okay, there it is, let's go a little smaller. Okay, we'll get this arm like that and the rest of his body, okay? That's it, we have most of our surfer taken care of. And I'm gonna get our eraser brush and go around his head just to, because that's where the, that's where our mistakes will show up the most right there. Okay, so now we have our surfer in place. We'll just clean that up. Now I could be zooming in on this. Normally I zoom in. And if you're on an iPad or a tablet device, I zoom way in like, and make sure that these are almost probably perfect to a fault when you're getting in here. Because this, this is where it really counts and you can tell the work that the artist did by the quality of the mask. So I'll come in here, get this back leg. Okay, so there we go. Now let's just add some anchor points and lock this thing down. Okay, am I adding anchor points? No, I was adding animation points, look at that. So what I'm gonna do is delete all those and add the right thing. Stabilizer points, thank you. Okay, so lock it down, lock it down, lock it down all the way across. In here, we don't want any of this moving right now. We may release that later but let's lock it down as we do this phase of the animation to make sure that he's not moving. That's what I wanna do first before I add anything else. Okay, so I've added my anchor points to the horizon and to the surfer, the surfer is masked. Now I'm gonna add just a couple, of, a couple of directions in here. So I want this water moving upward like this here. Right, and then I want to stabilize the edge of that water here. This is so complicated, look how hard this is. Literally clicking with one hand, making all this crazy animation, okay? And then we'll go back and add, actually let's play it first and see what kind of mess we make, let's see. Okay. Look at that, our water is moving, our surfer is not moving. We haven't added, we added anchor points to the edge of this water here, so it's not moving. Now we can add our animations to the top water to have that move a little bit, right? So let's pause that and come here, animation points, and let's just go here, 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 and in here. And maybe I don't know what I want to do down here. Let's add another one down there. Let's hit play. So it's getting there, right? So now we want to maybe go in and fine tune this edge here. So this animation is more convincing on that edge. And again, right, there's no, there, nothing to it other than what I've been showing you, right? So let's lock that down because that looks weird. Let's hit play. Better better and better. So the more you refine this, the better it gets. So now we could go in and say, yeah, I wanna animate that sky a little bit and add some, a subtle animation to the sky, a slow moving crawl to the sky, which will move behind the surfer. We gotta pay attention to the spray here because that'll, that'll give away our, 
our animation. So let's go ahead and stop that. Let's add a stabilizer point in this general area here because I want that to stay put. See how that works out. And then we'll add animation in here. So let's just make it crawl this way. This way. Okay, let's see what that does. There we go. So the whole thing is moving kind of with a 3D feel. We have an error on the face here, which I would just fix by going in and adding another stabilizer point here. We masked him, but some, for some reason, the software is still trying to grab those pixels. So we'll force it to leave those alone and hit play. Look at that, just like that animation from a still photograph. So the technique that I'm showing here can be used for, um, you know, the, the most common use that I've seen is using it for organic objects or organic scenes like water and clouds and smoke, those sorts of things. You can really easily add animation to those types of images, but you can also add really convincing images to geometry. So for example, an escalator, you wanna add animation and have that escalator appear like it's moving. You can do that, right? Same thing. Yeah, same thing, the same exact technique in that, in that example, you would mask off everything that you don't want to move and draw some arrows on where you want it to move. The software would figure everything else out for you and animate it. And then when you're done with these animations, all you do is file and export right, file and export into the, just like any other application, you export it as an MP4 file. And then from there, it's on your desktop and you can share it on Facebook, on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want it to go. And you've done this really quickly. You can do these shots. When I, when I first started playing with the software, I would play with it just watching TV, watching Netflix on the couch with my phone or with a tablet and go grab a bunch of images and see if I could animate them and see where the problem showed up. And that's where you learn, oh, you probably want to have an anchor point along horizon lines, or this is how you mask a face, you know, that kind of thing. But it's not, this is, you notice there were no Bezier curves in here. There were no animation, this, none of that. It literally, this doesn't move, that moves, and it moves in that direction. So that's, that's how that works. Are there any, any questions on this before we move on to the last demo? Michelle? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I, I'm just still in awe, but that was so cool. And it's, well, it looks, you make it look easy, so. Um. It, it really, it really is easy. Lucy says uh, in the chat, uh, how, can me, how can people make money at this? Yeah, I mean. This is what someone would use for an NFT. Like that's how they get some of their you, NFTs to move. Abs absolutely. Uh, in fact, this company is actually creating a version of the software that will allow you to export directly to that, to NFT. And do right? they have so any it'll... kind of commercial restrictions with their software? Like once you do it, or you, is it something you pay monthly for, for this? Yes, they, it's a subscription. Yeah, they have a subscription. They have a free version, of course, but then there's a subscription to look, unlock whatever features, but it's a nominal thing. I think it's like 10 bucks a year or 20. Like, you'll have to look. I haven't looked in a while, That's pretty but, uh, okay. but once you, but you know, once you own the software, there is no restrictions on what you can do with the images that you create with it. So you can mint NFTs and then your, your, your NFTs after that. I don't think a lot of photographers know about the software yet. You know, a lot of people that are minting NFTs are doing them the hard way, like with with uh, After Effects and that sort of thing and, and adding animation that way. You can see I did this with one hand on a trackpad while in a Zoom, right? Imagine what you could do if you had a glass of wine with you and you were, and you were working through it and you really meant what you were doing and you had a vision for the end result. So wow. I think that's the major thing, right? It's worth the price of admission right there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, cr it's crazy software. Yeah, it does some pretty cool stuff. The, the other thing that I want to throw out there is this software, you know, like I said, when you launch it, it's, it's not the prettiest software in the world, right? Or in other words, it's ugly, right? But the power of just those two pieces that I showed you, the anchor points and the direction once you get through all that other stuff, that nonsense, and you get into the software and you 
understand what you're doing, you export, then you're out of the software and you have your animated image and you're, you're good to go after that. So really, really powerful stuff. And then uh, I think we're just about wrapped up here. So I'm gonna go back into my presentation and close you guys off. And then we'll just do some, some chit chat about the overall stuff that we talked about here. Okay, so the one, this is, this is the, uh, I'm gonna share this real quick. This one um, is what I'm most excited about doing on Thursday. So let me share this. Okay, stand by. Okay. Okay, so let's just present this guy to you. Okay. All right. So, uh, multiple person, multiple personality dis disorder. Um, this is, you know, obviously tongue in cheek. This is an actual condition where people have multiple people living inside them. But I was inspired to name this this way uh, because of this show <laughs> that is out on Disney Plus right now called Moon Knight, and this is a superhero that suffers from multiple personality disorder and each of the personalities has superpowers and they do different things. Very funny, stars, uh, Arthur, what is it? Arthur Isaacs, I think is the, the actor that plays this guy. Really interesting. But when you look at this technique, this is a shot I did of me the other day. So this is what we're gonna be, this is one of the things that we're gonna be doing. How do you have compressed time to have multiple versions of you in a single scene, right? This is looks complex, insanely easy to do. And this is a, it's even easier to do now that Nikon has added this feature directly into the Z9, <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have one of those cameras. But if you're not, you can do this really easily. The basic technique is camera on tripod, lock the exposure so it doesn't change between shots, take the picture, move to a different picture position, take the picture, move to a different position. There's some little caveats in there. Like you'll notice if you overlap, images you're setting yourself up for more work like in this one i set myself up for a lot of masking work to make sure that this guy was occluded against these guys and if you look even closer you can see i made some mistakes in here right so around the edge here right there there's a mistake around the edge here you can kind of see my masking job in there you guys are not going to do that i'm going to show you how not to do that but you know, I do shots of my daughter from time to time like this. She's a she's a big gymnastics kid, and you know, we we did this cool shot of her on the beam doing multiple, you know, positions, handstands, etc. On the beam. And to Lucy's point, this this guy being able to take a shot like this and uh, offer it to a client. Right, I think that's something different than you know. If you want to make this, we're going to talk about saleable images. This is a surprise and delight image, right? If you you create an image like this and they don't know it's coming and it's amazing, you know how could they not, right? How could you not purchase an image like this? Then here's another one. Um, this is on Flickr. So if you search for multiplicity on Flickr, you'll you'll see a ton of these images. Once you start doing these, they become easier and easier. The interesting thing about these is these three techniques, whether they're cinemagraphs or the, you know, adding, adding motion to an image later using photograph or doing this multiplicity effect, you can combine these if it serves the story, right? So if you have a still photo like this, you take the still photo into, into the photograph software and make the bedding move if you want, right? So you have, complete power over all this. So you start seeing the different opportunities that open up, right? So this one, this one's a little over the top, right? This is one of those with great power comes great responsibility, right? Really, why would you do this? <laughs> and this and it's literally setting yourself up for a lot of work. So imagine what this kid did, right? All of these shots, I think there's two, there's two individuals in this in these scenes represented multiple times, but 
a lot of work and a lot of Photoshop work, but fun, right? A lot of fun to put this together and you can do this. And again, what if you brought this image into Plotograph and made the water move or took the image into Photoshop, did a sky replacement, put a dramatic sky in here and then made that move. You have complete control over the whole thing if it tells the story, but don't tell stories don't get into you know, using the software for the sake of demonstrating your superpowers, right? You don't see Superman or these other heroes flying around just to show that they can do it. They use them for a reason or you know, anyone else with ability, they don't use it just to demonstrate that thing. You use it to, for a specific story in the end. If it's not in service of the story, then don't do it, right? All right, so that's this presentation. I know we, we kind of ran a little bit long on this, but I wanted to, get through most of that and the purpose of this was to whet your appetite on the things that are possible like what can you do what can you do with these different techniques grab this qr code um it'll take you to canva i'm not sure if it'll make you log in or create an account the accounts are free anyway but grab the qr code and this will uh take you through those those first images they're all embedded in the presentation so that you know they'll play you can get inspired if you're coming out to hang with us on thursday grab this presentation and go through it and see what we're going to be doing and get your appetite whetted on the different kinds of things that are possible because i'm going to have some ideas of what we're, i've never been to the location we're going to so i'm kind of you know i'm i'm in improvisation mode when we're out there but we're going to create some cool stuff together i already have some ideas of what we're going to do but i want to hear your ideas as well of what you know based on what you see in this presentation what is possible and we'll do some shots of each other. We'll do some multiplicity shots of each other. We'll do some shots that we know that we're gonna add animation to in the end. Like, hey, that that barn looks interesting. Let's make the let's make the wall of that barn move behind the person that's standing there, right? Now that you know that you have the power to do these things and they're really easy to do, it kind of adds another tool to your toolbox for a storytelling. So we'll leave it right there. Make sure you grab either do a screenshot of this or pull out your phone and grab this QR code. And uh, yeah, you'll have the deck, go through it. And I'll be there on Thursday answering all questions, but Thursday is gonna be a fun day, a half a day of shooting. Then I guess we're gonna eat, right, Michelle? You know, and take a break or something. And then we're gonna do more shooting. So yes. Michelle, what's the, what's the flow? Okay, so the plan is, okay, so it's also a steal because we, this is our annual, um, open house and so we bring in someone special every year so frederick is our presenter and we do um, a workshop where we make it affordable for our members to be there so it's only 99 dollars, you guys which is a steal for what you're getting and we're going to meet at summer's past farm at 9 a.m um, they don't even open their gates until nine so we'll kind of congregate at the front um, there's a little parking lot right there it's off of highway 8 east and um Less Coaches Road, I believe. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to Google Lake it. Gen Lake Jennings. I it's think. Lake Jennings. There you go. It's off of Lake Jennings. So you take Lake Jennings, go straight off the on ramp, and keep going straight, and it's about a mile down on the left. So we're gonna meet there, and they they don't have any food on the premises. They do have a little coffee and tea shop. So if you want to buy a coffee, you can. And then we're gonna kind of follow Frederick around the property. It's a beautiful property. Oh my goodness. They just have all kinds of like crazy doors and facades. There's a truck. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. And then we're gonna break for lunch. There's a little uh, Italian restaurant right down the road and we're gonna go down there for lunch. Lunch is not provided. So you, it's, you'll have to pay for your own lunch but we're all gonna meet at this restaurant and it's literally less than five minutes down the road. And then- There are fairy, and was, garden. there are fairy gardens, Frederick. Yes. Fairy yeah. gardens. Fairy really. gardens. Little awesome. four of them, so. fairy gardens. And there's a um what what Archways. they have a little blue um trail. Was it the sunflower trail that's in bloom and the lavender? There's a sunflower labyrinth. Yes. There's no mm. lavender there anymore because no of the grass. Yeah. Okay. But, but yeah, so if you guys are if archways. you guys are coming, I would I would suggest that you bring uh a, a couple of easy changes of clothing for the multiplicity shots that we're gonna do. So if you have a, you know, bring a couple of different jackets or a scarf or so that you can distinguish the multiple versions of yourself, right? So right. this person right. has a jacket, this one has a hat, you know, whatever. 
and we'll have fun with it. We'll have a ton oh, of fun. And you, whoever comes, we're going to do, you know, I think we're not going to have a gigantic, you know, 30, 40 person crowd. So I think we'll be able to do shots of each person. So each person will have a set of images to bring back and run through the technique with. And I didn't show the actual masking technique for multiplicity, Michelle. So what I'll do is I will, after this, um, likely tomorrow, I'll record a quick video that walks through it and you can share it with the group and then, you know, we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, and I think we capped the group at 20. And so we have a few spots left. So if you guys want those spots, I would say sign up now, go to ppsdc.com and sign up there online. And then it says location to be determined, but it is Summers Pass Farm. So I'll be emailing all the signups tomorrow and then it, it's over, it's nine to four. So, and if you are a PPA member and you want merits, we're giving merits for this workshop. So I'm excited, Frederick, this was so cool. I just can't believe yeah. how, like how easy this There's is. so much. Yeah, right? Isn't that ridiculous? I mean, it is really easy. And I, you know, I was doing it on the computer and frankly the OS or the uh, the UI for the software is is a little bit harder on the computer. Even even though it's just dragging the lines around and masking like I was doing, if you happen to have an iPad or a tablet or even your phone with your finger, it's easier because you're you're literally pinching and zooming to get to the extreme detail. And if you have an Apple pencil, then you're kind of drawing around the edge you know, using the mask and it's perfect. You just literally all the effort goes into the masking piece, especially you have foreground elements in there. You go in, you get your mask right and drop some anchor points and say, make it move, hit play and you're done. And then from that point, export it and share it. And now you're a hero to all your followers. So it's pretty cool. That is very cool. All right, that, so we're gonna learn that. And oh my goodness, I like the idea of bringing the different clothes to try the multiplicity. And yeah. sunscreen, don't forget sunscreen and a bottle of water because there are yeah. shade, but I don't want anybody to burn, so. Question, are you guys going inside for the computer stuff? For the what? Oh no, we're gonna spend, he's gonna record that for us so you can have it later. Yeah, so I'm gonna do. The photography yeah. about, about yeah. working on them together at a computer. Yeah, there won't be. The computer stuff you'll have to do at home by yourself after the fact. Yeah, uh, we'll capture the raw material for that, and then I'll give you the, you know, for the multiplicity. You'll you'll see it's a really simple demo. I'll I'll run through that. Um, we'll we'll capture some images tomorrow, and I'll run through that and record that for you and send that over so that you have that to work from. But you'll have that before before you have your images to work on. Okay. Does right. anybody have more questions for Frederick? Questions, give me them. Come on. And I'm bringing this, Michelle, I'll bring this with me so that yes. you know we'll use it for a couple of the shots. This will okay. be fun. I went and dug mine out because I have the original one. And I like, I always wondered what these little spikes were for. Yeah, they're, they're, they're designed to mess up your desk surface. That's what they're <laughs> But I really like it, but I'm now I'm really curious about the, um, the new ball. Oh, the platter ball? Yeah. That's yeah, cool. let me let me put myself uh can I spotlight myself? Yeah, okay. There you go. So here it is. Yeah, that's the this guy. And the interesting thing about this, and you guys will play with this on Thursday, but it they created an inverted design. So this is an Arca Swiss plate at the top. And it's got a little locking mechanism on the back here that you rotate really quickly, which makes that ridiculously quick release. Oh, wow. So you do that. Yeah. And then these two buttons on the front here are tighten and loosen. So it make, basically the idea is you loosen it and you move it around to the position you want it in and you hit the button and now it's there. It's locked down tight oh, in wow. that position. Yeah. And then this guy, there's a little dial. The only other control on here is this dial here. that controls the amount of resistance on the pan head because it's a fluid pan head. So if you're doing video or something like that, you loosen that guy up and then the, the head will pan faster or slower. I like this, this mechanism on the front because I can loosen it, get it to where I want or the tension that I want and then tighten it a little. And because my cameras aren't that big, I have a Nikon Z6 II, right? It's not a huge camera, but I leave it loose enough or tight enough to hold the camera 
but loose enough so that I can move it without actually hitting the buttons. So now I can just rotate this around and get it to where I want, and it's perfect. I take the picture, move it, go. So it's it's kind of cool in that respect. Oh, but, good. I'm yeah, you guys. That in person, so. I yeah, think, yeah, put it through I, spaces. I was really skeptical when I first got a pot of pod because I'm like, what is this? Am I going to use this? I cannot believe how I use it all the time. And my daughter steals it for her YouTube channel videos because it'll <laughs> work on her dresser or she's got it tied all kinds of weird places and she uses yeah. it more than I do. Or for Yeah, those though. spikes. These feet, you know, like, this is just real quick. I'm going to show you these feet on here. So the feet mechanism, I don't think these feet are on yours, right? No, the I way don't that have those. this work. Yeah, these are interesting because they you pull out, you pull this out like this is spring loaded. You oh, pull it out and ro rotate it like that. So you rotate all of them in that direction, that direction. And now it has rubberized feet to sit on. So it's now it's not, you know, it won't slip around. But mm -hmm. you can also flip these around and Make point them. Right. And now you have yeah. like these spikes that, you know, if you're on a surface that's slippery or, you know, it, it, on an angled surface and you want to kind of dig it in, you that's what those are for. You can oh, dig it into okay. that spot and this thing's not going to move. Because mine do have the feet and the spike, but mine are not, they're like attached on a little pocket and I have to mm -hmm. actually put them in or turn them around. So you get that extreme is way better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I it's it's really this cool. One anymore. This one's probably ancient. But I didn't know about the feet either. So now I have feet and spikes. Woo, I'm in business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everybody should have one of these for sure. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Well, cool. I hope that was helpful, the presentation. Hope you guys that enjoyed awesome. that. It's so really, really good. Feels turned about, oh, what can I do with that? Oh, yeah. Fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, my my advice would be while while it's, while it's still kind of fresh in your mind, you know what we did and kind of the animation and how simple that was. Go play with it. You like go grab an image. I don't care if you go to, you know, pexels.com or Unsplash or whatever. Go grab an image from over there and or one of your own images, preferably bring it into the app and just play with it. Start making mistakes so that you start understanding how it works. You know, draw, bring an image in, draw a line on it or an animation and hit play and see what happens. And like, oh, that's interesting. What if I lock this down? Oh, that's better. You know, and it'll, once you do that a couple of times, it's over, right? It, it's literally over. It's very addictive. So and you guys, are you, you guys putting the music and all that in like with Premiere or Final Cut or what do you do with the music? Yeah. Yeah. You put it in with a, with a, with a nonlinear editor, like, like Final Cut or Premiere or, you know, even something you could, no, absolutely. It doesn't okay. need to be anything special like those. It could be iMovie on the phone even, you know, or on the tablet. LumaFusion is a great app that I use all the time for video editing. It's like the professional video editing application for iOS. It's called LumaFusion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then that you just drag your soundtrack in there, adjust the volume of it. You know, maybe bring in a sound effect or two if you're if the illusion that you're creating needs it, and export the thing, and you're done. You know, I guarantee people will say, "How did you do that on social media?" If you <laughs> if you export one yeah, of those, yeah, yeah, that is really yeah. really cool. Okay, yeah, my mind's like, "Ooh, what can I do?" This is awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fun stuff, and then yeah, your mind really explodes when you start thinking about overlaying these techniques together and yeah. doing. Okay, and, you know, and notwithstanding all the other tools that we have, like the, the sky replacement, like I was talking about in Photoshop, you know, you have a shot that you did in Yosemite back in 1993 or something, you break that thing out, throw a cool sky on it, animate the sky, put some music and stuff in the foreground and boom, now you have a, a brand new original work of art that you created. So yeah, and like it's, it's with, crazy. I feel like I can keep up with my 16 year old now. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, teach teach your 16 year old because then they're going to be doing this <laughs> yeah. oh that's pretty cool yeah, right, yeah. we need to chat yeah. like whoever comes on thursday then we got to do a challenge for like have a little uh competition for the most creative multiple personality shot or something um, oh yeah. yeah 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 absolutely okay absolutely yeah so we we i hope 
everybody signs up because it's going to be fun and we're going to be in person y'all <laughs> for the first is this the first time you guys are meeting in person for a while we did one we did a photo walk at, in julian like two months ago i think that was in person but we haven't done a whole lot of stuff and so now that everybody's getting back to normal it's time so no yeah. excuses you guys you got to come out on thursday so, i'm a doctor i'm in at nine if i can move it i will see you there if i cannot okay. then i will even if you came after I think yeah. Yeah. because we'll be there. How long will we be there, Michelle? Till four. Yeah, till four. four. So, yeah. like, if we get started at nine, yeah, Karen. Even if you have to come at ten or eleven, and then I think we'll probably break for lunch around noon or one for an hour, and then we'll be back. Um, mm -hmm. I think though we're going to be so busy, our day is going to fly by. And it's going to fly. There's it's so much to look at over there, and Frederick has so much to teach us. I think you guys. Yeah, I mean. Yep. Yeah. I don't just know. make sure you bring bring your camera, bring your tripod if you have one. Yeah. So and I will have one, you know, with me for those that don't have one. Yeah, I'll bring my platypod too so people can check out. Yeah. Version. And the platypod, yeah, we'll have that. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be here. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I should add for that. I don't know. Every time I talk to you, Frederick, I get really inspired. So I mean, even if we just sat around and talked about photography, I don't know, like, you can always learn something. But this is absolutely good. different than yeah, anything ask we've me. done too at PPSDC. We haven't done anything like this yet. So I think oh, it's good. Great. Good. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Ask me anything. Yeah. I've been using I've been using Photoshop since I'm gonna date myself. Uh <laughs> since version two. Version two is when I first started using Photoshop. This is before layers in Photoshop. So wow. when, didn't Photoshop start? YouTube, Deborah. <laughs> was Photoshop like 1986? When did it come out? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think so. Maybe 84, 85, somewhere in that window. Yeah. Okay, because this is terrible. Uh, the t-shirt that I saw, but I thought it was super funny. And this is awful. It said Photoshop helping ugly people since 1986. <laughs> 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 helping ugly people lie since 1986. Yes. <laughs> helping ugly people since 1986. And I thought, oh, that's terrible, but funny. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, I loved that. But Without Photoshop, there'd be no catfishing, right? So there you I go. Know. <laughs> now they just have filters, lots of filters on. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Great. Right. Oh, and you know what? We can also talk about what you're doing tomorrow night with IEPPV. We want to put yes. it in. I forgot about that earlier in announcements. Absolutely. Let me see if I can find that flyer real quick that Troy sent me because it has the, oh, the names yeah. of our two speakers on it. I think I might and have. We'll bring that up. If you have, we'll see who gets it to, gets to it first. Okay. It's Terry Pearson, Ernesto Torres. Oh, you win. And Frederick Van Johnson. Hey, I know that guy. Yeah. Is there Here's a link? The fire. To learn more. I'll put the link in the chat. And is this one? This is the IEPPV's open house. Now, is this one going to be in person or is it on um, Zoom? In person. Oh, it's in, in person. person. <gasps> yeah, Circle City Center, three sixty five North Main in Corona. All right. Casey's yep. so the the flow basically what we'll be doing uh tomorrow at this event is ernesto and terry will be there in person along with me i will be in lucy i'll be in podcaster mode interviewer mode we'll all be on stage and i will be basically picking their brains as two award-winning photojournalists from a former combat photojournalist about wow. their work about their processes about their gear about some of the more challenging situations that they've been in, all those sorts of things we'll be we'll be talking about, you know, from one photojournalist to another, you know, what what the what their lives look like right now. So it should be interesting. Very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. And Corona's not that far from all of us. So oh. anybody, I put the link there in the chat for that if you wanted to sign up to go to that. Just make sure you don't stay up too late and that you could come to our San Diego event on Thursday. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I forgot about that. It's the next morning. <laughs> I know. And I know how Troy likes to stay up all night. 
Oh. You know, and we're like brothers, so we're going to stay up all night talking regardless. So yeah, it's you guys just are going to be, yeah. yeah. Oh, you'll just be going on adrenaline. It'll be fine. Yeah, it will be. It will be. I'll sleep on the plane. And we can sleep, <laughs> we can sleep later, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Is That's Troy right. going to yeah. come on Thursday to San Diego? Yes. Yes. Oh, he, okay. he will be there. Okay, cool. Yeah, he will be well, there. We got a bonus, you guys. Yeah. Troy Miller is going to come hang with us, too. Very yeah. cool. Yep. There we go. He will be there. And if anyone's going out to uh, NAB next week, I will be out there speaking. I'm actually doing 10 presentations out there on okay, what everything. Is it? uh, it's the National Association of Broadcasters Conference in Las Vegas. Oh. So it's, it's, the, it's the broadcasting world's big yearly events, you know, where all the big wigs show up and show their new things. And over the recent years, it's, it's added other things to it other than broadcasting, like social media live streaming and podcasting and that that's where I kind of come in this year they're adding a lot of uh crypto stuff like nfts and do they make sense and I'm doing several talks on nft technology there so it should be really interesting oh that would be a really great conference to go to yeah yeah you're, you're everywhere I know. I uh, yeah, this it's this month. It has been what you know. I when it rains, it pours. This is one of those pours months, mm -hmm. right? I'm here, then I'm home. You know, to kiss my daughter for one day, and then I'm on a plane to Vegas for another five days. <laughs> then I get to go home again. I'm actually I'll be in uh, Iceland in uh, when is it? Um, August, August oh. of this year. I'll be speaking speaking at the Creativity Conference in Reykjavik. And uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Never been there, so it should be should be interesting. So lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff. Now yeah. that the world is open, I think you know the planes are flying again. Yeah, and so that's this year. And then, um, where else have you have you presented and spoken in your career here? Oh wow! Uh, location wise, I presented and spoken in New Zealand, uh, Texas, London. Tell us uh, about these events, Japan. like what organizations have you spoken for in all these different countries? So I, I did a workshop, well, I'll talk, talk about a couple of them. I, I did a workshop in New Zealand with a photographer by the name of Trey Radcliffe. Um, so we went out there and we did a workshop on HDR type photography and all that. And he lives, he's expatriate, you, you know, United, United States citizen now living in New Zealand. Um, so he invited me out to, to co-lead this workshop with them. I also did a workshop in Vietnam where we took a group of photographers from northern Vietnam through several cities ending up in Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon in southern Vietnam, stopping for a night along the way and having dinner and photographing during the day. Amazing. It was an amazing adventure. Uh, so we did that. That was a couple of years ago. The uh, Chicago, I've spoken out there at the Out of Chicago conference, which is very interesting. Spoke at WPPI several times. So on and on and on. I'm no no stranger to crowds and photography. Yeah. So oh, no, fun. that's fascinating. <laughs> I, love, I love hearing about all of these, you know, these different organizations and these different events, because I know you and I have been talking about how we, we love PPA, we're a PPA affiliate, but, oh, and of course my husband decides to vacuum right now. Um, but there's so much here. There's so much more going on in the world besides just PPA stuff. And I love hearing about all these different organizations and all these things. I'm gonna go ask yeah. him to turn off the vacuum. I'll be right back. I'm gonna That's run. Awesome. Um, thank you, Frederick. I'll send you. You're an welcome. Email and we'll connect. So yeah, yeah. Let's let's definitely. Bye, what, what did you call it? Would you call it, Lucy? Pod what? Pod pod, pod sharing. Pod swap. Pod swap. Yes. Yeah. Let's pod swap. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yep, let's Maybe do it. Maybe can do dance. <laughs> do the pod swap. <laughs> or <Okay>. not. <laughs> or not. Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right, see you. Bye, Lucy. Oh, that was funny. My husband, I asked him to vacuum out our new cabinet so we could put our kitchen stuff away, and he's vacuuming because I asked him to. And I'm like, not now. I was thinking yeah. I've never complained about my husband vacuuming. Anything. I can't believe I had to tell him to stop vacuuming. That's terrible. What woman tells her husband to stop vacuuming? Oh, sorry. All right. One word. One word. Roomba. <laughs> I put a Roomba in a cab in a 
in a drawer though but yeah oh okay is that what you said okay yeah we just got a new kitchen and he's putting he's has to vacuum out the drawers and clean them before we put our stuff away so yes oh my goodness so fun well this has been really cool um but it's yeah. funny because everybody seems kind of quiet tonight normally everybody's got what's going on you guys what's up everybody's just soaking it all in everybody's shy my mind is going with ideas yeah. oh feedback yeah i mean frederick sorry about that i hit the wrong the wrong unmute button yeah my mind is going with all sorts of ideas that i mean that was so awesome there's yeah. so much you yeah. can do with this yeah, with great power comes great responsibility, right? <laughs> so yeah. that's, the, that's the thing. You saw some of that art in the photograph application, right? So there's there's some psychedelic stuff going on in there that you, you guys want to not necessarily yep. do. Like tasteful, tasteful application. Look at animation like seasoning in a soup, right? <laughs> so it's very easy to overdo it, right? And, but get it, when you get it right, it's perfect. Otherwise, so, you feel like you're taking psychedelics or something. And... Or something. Yeah, <laughs> or something, for sure. So who do you have lined up for your podcast um, coming up here? Anybody exciting? Uh, well, I'm sure they're all Yeah, inter interestingly, tonight, uh, it's actually queued up for me to hit post right now. I did an interview with Troy Miller, what was last week or the week before, I think it was, on his initial thoughts about his new Nikon Z9, which apparently is the world's best mirrorless camera you know bar none so we did a whole discussion on that particularly in all seriousness particularly about the focusing features in that camera so it does some basically you know it gives you new life as a photographer in a lot of ways in terms of focusing accuracy you know as we get older and we start losing our eyesight the camera fixes it in a lot of ways so it keeps you <laughs> so, yeah that's why i went mirrorless is because i just yeah my old eyes but oh how cool okay yeah yeah so that's coming up um i can tell you right now i have the folder right in front of me so uh troy miller's coming up i uh, did an interview with the ceo of a photography bag company called hex brand or hex you can find them at hexbrand.com they make photography bags so we talked about basically the the competitive landscape for camera bags and how they're keeping up especially with the supply chain challenges that most retailers are living through right now. So we did that. Uh, also coming up, I mentioned that application LumaTouch, which is an iOS video editing application for iPad and iPhone, which is amazing. It's like Final Cut or Premiere, but on these little devices and in some ways more powerful than Final Cut or Premiere. So did that interview. I did uh, an interview with Dan Harlicher, who is one of the founders of a company called On One Software. And we talked about what On One is doing, what's coming up in the future for them, why they create software. Are they competitive with Adobe? Or are they friendly with Adobe? So answered all those questions. And then I did an interview with uh, Ace Fanning, who runs a company called Unraveled Academy, which is a collective it's kind of a, a membership collective of photographers with a really interesting spin on bringing photographers together in almost a summer camp type experience where, you, you know, they take a group of photographers and they rent out this million dollar house somewhere and they do all these kind of cool summer camp type activities. And some of them are mental health related, you know, where they get in and help people you know deal with their problems and that sort of thing and then some of them are some of the activities are photography focused some are not either of those things and they're just more fun type you know kind of uh relationship building type exercises three-legged races and bonfires and all that kind of stuff they do it all but it's all based around photography and everyone's the the, the tie that binds all the people that attend together is the love of photography, which is a really interesting take on it. So yeah, that'll be publishing in a, in a couple of weeks. So it should be interesting. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's yeah. Cool. Well, we had Lots. a we had a class on NFT from some of our previous members and it was a fabulous class. It was a lot to take in and for some of us yeah. who do at NFT. So I went to your podcast and I've been kind of picking and choosing all the NFTs. Um, I mm -hmm. really enjoyed the one with the young girl, was her name Lindsay? 
I'm trying to remember. She's 17 and like killing it in the NFT market. Oh, the New Yorker. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That uh -huh. was a fantastic uh -huh. one. And then the other one that I really enjoyed was um, your friend that does um, cryptocurrency. And he's got the website that you can basically mint your NFTs and do everything oh. through his website. And yes, uh, I think that was Yevgeny Yevgeny Chabotarov. I think he was one of the he was one of the original founders of 500px.com, and then he sold that and became a co-founder or a VP over at Skyloom Corporation, which was based in Kiev, which is no longer based in Kiev for obvious reasons. Um, and then he went on and started his own NFT company. And that's where he is now. So that's one of them. There's a couple of interviews. I don't know if that's the one you talk about, Michelle, but he's no, one of them. That's not that a, has a company. That, I want to hear that one too, because yeah. I'm really yeah. trying to figure out this whole NFT thing. And I just think what you just taught us tonight is another, just the cherry on top. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. But yeah, just don't yeah. learn all the cryptocurrency. And so, so everybody go listen to Twit because you've got so much good information on there. I just... Yeah. Put in my earbuds, but you know what? You have them all on YouTube too. And so yes. I was listening to the also the one with the lady who does a lot of embellishing um, and painting on actual photographs. And oh, I apologize yes. for not, I should have taken notes and been able to tell everybody who the names are. So that one I was listening to, and I thought, okay, I got to go watch this because she had a lot of stuff. So whatever Frederick does, you pr pretty much video all your podcasts, don't you? So you can go back I do. and I do. watch them. So I had a visual watch them. that when I went back and listened twice, because her information that she had on actually painting and the technique with the pencils and the pastels and the wax or whatever she was putting on an actual fine art print was fascinating to me. And that was yeah. a really diverse her name. Print. Her name is Cheryl. 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 Yeah. Cheryl, yeah Dorskin. Dorskin. D-O-R-S-K-I-N-D. Um, yeah, she's uh, she teaches at NYU, I believe, in New York, and she the part she's part of the photography uh, curricula over there. And yeah, she wrote a book on the art of fine art, fine art painting on prints, and she's the real deal. She and I were talking about um, the uh, about potentially doing a collaborative podcast together, where we want to we think she and I were just talking offline, kind of like this, and we think there's a need for a, a art history type podcast yeah. you know a show that kind of goes into the history and examines you know maybe one episode of one episode you know maybe every other week or monthly so not a weekly type podcast but uh, a very concentrated look almost documentary style look at a particular a particular photographer and their work in history like a like a Cartier Brisson or somebody like that, you know, and talk about their work and some of their trials and tribulations and what they did and you know the good and the bad and the ugly, all that stuff. So we're we're putting that together right now. That I, that would be really interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So y'all, you gotta you gotta go. I, I don't know how I put any time for a family or anything because I'm just wanting to constantly soak up all this stuff and be like a <laughs> professional student all the time. My kids, I got That's my ear and my kids are like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh, I'm, I'm, listening. I'm learning. It's fun. You know, they're on TWIP, on TWIP, this week of photo, there are in the catalog, there are over 1600 uh, and roughly hour long episodes in the catalog, which is, you could listen to that podcast for two years straight and never, never get up constantly you well, know that's why constantly. I said you're my best friend day. because I feel like I know you that's got to weird you out too though but when you get somebody like I mean I know we've met over this and you, if I call you up you'd be like hey Michelle but it's got to be yeah. weird too if there's somebody you've never met before but they know you through that your podcast and you're like oh okay you know but it, this is such a strange world we're living in does that happen a yeah. lot it happens not a lot. It usually happens at conferences where there's a congregation of a lot of photographers, you know, but it did, it did happen at one time that worked in my favor. So I was on a first date with my now partner and we went, we were, I took her to the Cirque du Soleil thing in San Jose. Uh, I forget what it was. I forget what it was called, but it had horses and stuff in it. So we go in there, we're, we're standing in line, walking up and somehow I, I think 
somehow I had managed to get VIP tickets somehow. So I'm feeling all important anyway, right? So we we go to sit down and we're on our ways to our our way to the seats and we're just talking and someone randomly comes up to me almost on cue and goes, I'm sorry, but are you Frederick Van Johnson? And I was like, well, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I love your podcast. I don't mean to interrupt. It was that whole thing. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you set this up, didn't you? I was like, I did not set it up. Oh, that, that was the first yeah. date? Oh, that, yeah, that was the first date. That's that pretty good. That was the first good. date. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought so. I thought so. Oh, so. Our photo world, it's small. I mean, it really is small. And if for the people that have some notoriety and some celebrity or whatever with that our community, it's like, I'm sure there's people that get off band and like, oh my goodness, there's Frederick and not want to approach you. But then I remember, was it Sue Bryce telling a story about how she was at the mall and she was standing there and somebody said, hey, would you mind with the cell phone? Would you mind taking a picture of us real quick? And so <laughs> she goes, yes, I took their picture. We were all laughing like, did you know Sue Bryce just took your picture? You know, like, it's like, did you know Frederick? Yeah. And Johnson just took your picture with a cell phone. That's pretty funny. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, it's fun. You know, podcasting is, it's, it's interesting because it, it is, it's so accessible to so many people. It doesn't feel weird, right? Because okay. it's like, I'm just another person that recorded some stuff. Yeah. So. And you're so relatable and such a real guy. I'm sure. Yeah. You make everybody your friend and you meet them. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, you can Absolutely. listen for two years and still, oh man, I gotta go. I got two some years. to listen to. But it is a yeah. wealth of information, really. I mean, if you have something, a subject you're interested in, you can go to TWIP and search the library and it's there and it's a wealth of information. It's really cool. Yeah. Really, yeah. really cool. Thank That's you. awesome. Thank you. Well, anybody else? It's, it's almost 8 30. And usually people, well, we're all pretty chatty. Let's see. Dana's got to go. Karen's got to go. Well, Karen got up at four o'clock in the morning. I told her she's got to change that schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I go, I'm going to give you, Michelle, I'm, I did a, I'm going to give you a link to the presentation on NFTs that I did recently for the, the, uh, it was, I forget what conference it was, but it was a couple of months ago. Okay. And yeah, the presentation is pretty cool, I think, and it has a lot of information in it. I'm going to give you the link to it, give you all the link to it right now. Thank you. And okay. I'm going to remember to stop recording right now. It's probably a good point. Oh, yeah. <laughs>